the nightly business report good evening tonight the minister of public security states that the country cannot immediately resume online visa issuance under the old system as ordered by court as the immigration department's computer system has been changed experts convey that as bangladesh grapples with severe crisis sri lanka is poised to benefit from april orders in the short term to maintain supply chain and meet critical deadlines Exceptionally volatile week marks the end at the Colombo Stock Exchange with significant fluctuations shaping the market's performance. And US jobless claims fall more than expected, soothing worries that the labor market is weakening too quickly. From Studio 24, here's Vinod Wanasuriya. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas said that Sri Lanka cannot immediately resume online visa issuance under the old system as ordered by court as the immigration department computer system has been changed to new procedures and fees. Sri Lanka Supreme Court suspended a controversial deal with IVS GBS and VFS Global where big fees were charged on tourists to use what the industry said was a complex user unfriendly system that was putting off visitors. Minister Alice said that when VFS Global system started in April 2024 additional visa categories which were gazetted with higher fees were introduced and the back end of the immigration department was also changed. The minister added that SLT Mobitel, a Sri Lanka-based telecom company that operated the old system had also said they can immediately resume only the old categories. However, to do that, the back end of the immigration system had to be changed. The Supreme Court gave an interim order to revert to the old system until the hearing was concluded. SLT Mobitel had also informed the Department of Immigration that they got the notice to appear in court after the decision was delivered. The travel trade has complained that tourists were finding VFS Global difficult to navigate and they were choosing other countries where entry was easier. The US embassy has announced an additional commitment of 24.5 million US dollars from the American people to further the United States long-standing investment in the people of Sri Lanka and the US Sri Lanka partnership. The additional funding was announced during a visit to Sri Lanka by the US Agency for International Development's Assistant Administrator of the Bureau for Asia, Michael Schiffer, at an event held at the Ministry of Finance. The US Embassy in Colombo said the US aid Sri Lanka and Maldives Mission Director Gabriel Grau also participated in today's ceremony alongside State Minister of Finance Shehan Sema Singha. The funds, committed through a development objective grant agreement between US aid and the government of Sri Lanka, will strengthen Sri Lanka's market-driven growth, foster environmental sustainability and resilience, and promote good governance practices. As a result of a partnership across government, non-government organizations and civil society, the funds support collaborative efforts that are making a positive difference in the lives of Sri Lankans. US Ambassador to Sri Lanka Julie Chang underscored the continued commitment of the American people to investing in economic growth and good governance with this additional funding. The United States has provided more than 2 billion US dollars in assistance to Sri Lanka since 1956 to support various sectors. The Sri Lanka's Joint Apparel Association Forum commented that as Bangladesh A major player in the global apparel market grapples with severe crisis. Sri Lanka is poised to benefit from some apparel orders in the short term. The crisis in Bangladesh may prompt buyers to seek alternative sources to maintain their supply chains and meet the critical deadlines. The Joint Apparel Association Forum Secretary General Johan Lawrence highlighted Sri Lanka's agility and sophisticated production capabilities, noting that the country has spare capacity to temporarily fill some of these gaps. He added that given Sri Lanka's proven ability to adapt and our available capacity, we expect some foreign buyers to turn to Sri Lanka until the situation in Bangladesh stabilizes and this was a similar dynamic to what we experienced during our own crisis. However, Lawrence acknowledged that Bangladesh's apparel industry is significantly larger than Sri Lanka's, making it impractical for the island nation to fully absorb the volume of orders displaced by the crisis. He further added that the buyers are satisfied with the cost, quality and sustainability benefits of shifting production to Sri Lanka. They may retain some of them in the medium to long term. While Sri Lanka cannot match Bangladesh's scale, its ability to execute smaller, agile production runs could make it a valuable component in global supply chain resilience strategies. Let's take a short commercial break now. Stock market updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. 
The Columbus stock market underscored this week's volatility by closing with gains after a day of losses. Well, throughout the week, indices exhibit daily trend shifts, and today, both the All Share Price Index and the S&P S20 ended the market session in positive territory. Well, to get a brief summary on the final trading session for this week, we now turn to Ranjan Ranatunga standing by from First Capital Holdings. Yes, Vinod. The Columbus continued its lethargic sentiment for yet another day as investors opted to stay on the sidelines due to the uncertainty hovering around in the political arena as presidential elections approach in the horizon. On the back of this, turnover levels continue to remain weak at the bows, with turnover recorded for the day slumping to 404 million, while both ASPI and SP SA20 indices recorded a slight gain of 49 points and 19 points, bouncing back from yesterday's decline. Premier Blue Chip, John Keyes Holdings, and Divisa Conglomerate, Sunshine Holdings, led the daily aggregate turnover with a contribution of 10% each, while the revitalized interest, investor interest following the doubling of profits to $1.1 billion on access was also another notable performer. Furthermore, Sampath Bank continued to remain a favorite among retailers as promising results delivered for the second quarter 2024 further strengthened investor confidence on the share. Moreover, foreign inflow of $24.3 million was recorded for the day, bringing the total year-to-date outflow to $5.3 billion. Among the for top foreign active shares, Sunshine Holdings enticed highest inflow of 24.3 million for the day, while Three Acre Farms and Chevron Lubricants were the next two biggest contributors for the day. Meanwhile, during today's proceedings, Blue Diamond Nun Voting, Nation Lanka Finance, Union Bank Finance, Columbus Dockyard entered in, emerged as the top gainers for the day, while Tess Agro Nun Voting, Asia Asset Finance and Muller and Phipps were recorded as the top losers for the day. Thank you. Well, it has been an exceptionally volatile week at the Colombo Stock Exchange with the significant fluctuations shaping the market's performance throughout the week. Well, to provide us with a comprehensive overview of the week's key developments and insights, we now turn to Nethmi Fernando joining us from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The market commenced the week on a dull note, recording its second highest year-to-date dip as the ASPI recorded at 11,252, with both indices easing on the red. Banking sector counters, namely Commercial Bank, mostly contributed to the negative sentiment ahead of the final renunciation date of its rights issue. Furthermore, conglomerates also contributed negatively influenced by the uncertainties surrounding the upcoming election. Moreover, towards the week, the market turned positive, regaining momentum, but failed to attain the regained pace throughout the week as the market was broadly stagnant with thin volumes and lackluster sentiment towards the midweek. Towards the latter part of the week, the market continued on the red following a negative sentiment recording at 11,303, mainly backed by the uncertainty surrounding the geopolitical landscape and the global mar market uh, volatility, as the investors earned for clear direction. Furthermore, the upcoming third review of the IMF extended fund facility has also influenced the market with uncertainty as the country yet awaits for its review expecting USD 336 million funds to be accessed following the fourth tranche that may back the market to regain its positive sentiment. Turnover was recorded at LKR 403.4 million, that's 53.1% lower than the monthly average of LKR 860.1 million whilst foreign investors re, uh, remained net buyers, recording LKR 24.3 million. Gold prices fell in Asian trade today as positive US labor data sparked a recovery in the risk appetite and sapped some safe haven demand, putting the yellow metal on course for some weekly losses. Spot gold fell 0.4% to $2,419.23 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December fell 0.2% to $2,459.10 an ounce. Gold hits for mild weekly losses and states close to record highs. Spot prices were down nearly 1% this week, coming off near-record high levels 
hit last week as fears of recession ramped up safe haven demand for the yellow metal. Among industrial metals, copper price also benefited from an improved risk appetite. Meanwhile, oil prices were flat today but were on track for their first positive week in five bolstered by a mix of bargain buying, improving sentiment toward the US economy and a persistent geopolitical tension. Brent oil futures slipped 0.1% to $79.11 a barrel, while the West Texas Intermediate Crude futures fell 0.1% to $74.99 a barrel. Mildly better than expected Chinese inflation data helped oil pair initial losses as it indicated some improvements in the world's largest oil importer. Oil prices rebounded from seven-month low this week after concerns over US recession and a slew of weak Chinese data had battered crude prices over the past four weeks. Meanwhile, sustained tensions in the Middle East amid fears of retaliation by Iran and Hamas against Israel also contributed to the risk premium. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today. At People's Bank, reports say that buying and selling rates of the US dollar have dropped from 295 rupees and 96 cents to 295 rupees and 27 cents and from 306 rupees and 58 cents to 305 rupees and 87 cents respectively. Well, according to Commercial Bank, the buying rates of the US dollar have dropped from 295 rupees and 54 cents to 294 rupees and 95 cents and the selling rate from 305 rupees and 75 cents to 304 rupees and 75 cents. Well, now let's take a look on how the rupee's performance was against the other major global currencies. short break now, updates from the corporate sector on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Merchant Bank of Sri Lanka and Finance PLC has entered into a memorandum of understanding with Haley Solar, the renewable energy arm of Haley's Fentons, to launch two new solar financing programs which include a personal solar loan scheme and a term loan tailored for both individuals and businesses. Mr. Anara Pereira, the chairman of Merchant Bank of Sri Lanka, mentioned that they are happy to join hands with Haley Solar to launch the new solar loan schemes and this initiative will further enhance their portfolio and bring them closer to their long-term sustainability goals. The managing director of Haley's Fentons, Mr. Hasit Premathilaka, also commented that they believe the access to solar power should be available for everyone and their partnerships with MBSL will support more individuals and businesses to experience the benefits of solar power. This initiative falls under Haley Solar's new initiative, Nayak Noena Nayak, which allows customers to pay a low monthly bank installment, which is less than their current monthly electricity bill. As a result, the savings after paying the bank installment can be invested in their family's future while enjoying free electricity for 20 years. Interested individuals can contact MBSL or Haley Solar. TJ Lanka PLC, Sri Lanka's first multinational textile manufacturer, has had a positive start to the financial year 2024-2025, driven by strategic responses to the challenges facing the textile manufacturing industry. The group has reported profit before tax of 273.7 million rupees for the three months ending 30th June 2024, reversing a loss of 701 million rupees in the first quarter of the preceding year. TJ Lanka said in a filing with the Colombo Stock Exchange, revenue for the three months 
is at 15.4 billion rupees, reflected an improvement for 10% over the corresponding quarter of the previous year. But gross profit grew by 357% to 1.3 billion rupees. Consequently, the group posted an operating profit of 382 million rupees from an operating loss of 582 million rupees in the first quarter of 2023-2024 and reported net profit of 158.3 million rupees for the quarter under review in contrast to a net loss of 853 million rupees in the corresponding period of the previous year. TJ Lanka PLC also reported a strong balance sheet, ending the first quarter with cash and cash equivalents of 8.9 billion rupees. At the 45th National Conference of Chartered Accountants, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka once again engaged professionals, including young business leaders, to play a critical role in helping the country seize new opportunities. The conference comes as the outlook for Sri Lanka looks more hopeful than it had in the past few years, signaling a potential march towards a robust economy. In the wake of the worst ever economic crisis faced by the country, and while it still deals with its repercussions, which includes a significant brain drain to this date, it is clear that fresh perspectives are essential to ensure the survival of the nation, as well as its rise above the challenges hurled its way. As a professional institute of the highest caliber, CA Sri Lanka has continuously inculcated thought leadership among the professional community. This year's national conference hopes to inspire young leaders to fearlessly embrace the fast-evolving future and encourage them to go above and beyond the customary realm when in pursuit of excellence. The theme of this year's conference, Marching Beyond Margins, was unveiled at a special press conference organized by CA Sri Lanka, which was graced by CA Sri Lanka President Heshana Kuruppu and many other esteemed guests. The 2024 Provincial School Games organized by CBL Samaposha recently concluded its final tournament for the Southern Province at the DA Rajapaksha Stadium in Beliapur. Since its inception in 2015 in the North Central Province, the Samaposha Provincial School Sports Games have expanded to five provinces, including the Northwestern, Eastern, Uva and Southern Provinces, reaching over 18,500 children from 1,800 schools. These young athletes now have the opportunity to showcase their skills in more than 70 events. In this tournament, the overall girls' championship was claimed by Kumaratunga Munidasa Mahavidyalaya in Matara, while Rahula Vidyalaya Matara won the overall boys' championship. Beyond fostering athletic talent, this initiative prioritizes the overall development of children by focusing on nutrition, education, creativity and good morals. The sole objective of the 2023 Provincial School Games is to strengthen Sri Lankan school athletes, promote their health and physical fitness and produce athletes capable of achieving international recognition for the country. Siapatha Finance PLC successfully opened its 50th branch Ilwala China recently. The new branch opening took place in the presence of Siapatha PLC Managing Director Mr. Ananda Sinaviratna, Chief Operating Officer Mr. Rajiv De Silva and the Senior Management as well as representatives of the government and private financial institutions. From fishery, plantation and textile to tourism and hospitality, Vala Chenna today has fast progressed into one of the most commercially occupied demographics in the Batiklo district. This versatile nature of business and the scenic natural beauty in the area has encouraged Siapatha to support locals in discovering its maximum potential. Siapatha Finance PLC Managing Director Mr. Ananda Seneviratna commented that the event marks a significant milestone in its goal to reach every corner of the country. He added that the opening of the 50th branch in Vala Chenna has given the opportunity to offer their holistic financial services to a growing business community and witness the very purpose of the organization come to life. Approximately 65% of Batiklo's total population represent the district's workforce. While people of Vala Chenna primarily depend on traditional industries for a steady income, a considerable portion of this segment also leans on small and medium-scale enterprises and other part-time trade activities. 
Let's take a short commercial break. Stay tuned as global updates are on its way right after this. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks were higher today after US stocks rallied yesterday in Wall Street's later sharp swerve after better than expected report on unemployment eased worries about this global economy. Well, in Tokyo, yen erased earlier losses in morning trading and extended its fourth consecutive day of gains against the dollar, with Japanese equities then losing momentum as it often falls when the yen rises. China's inflation came in higher than expected in July, with the consumer price index rising 0.5% compared to the same period a year earlier, boosted by food prices which are no longer dragging on inflation and were flat last month. Earlier this week, the weaker than expected employment data from the US raised concerns about a slowing economy where the Federal Reserve has kept the high interest rates that aim to stifle the inflation for too long. On Wall Street now. The UX stocks jumped yesterday with the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 each ending more than 2% higher after the jobless claims fell more than expected, soothing worries that the labor market was weakening too quickly. U.S. stocks jumped on Thursday after data showed unemployment claims fell more than expected last week, soothing worries the labor market was weakening too quickly. The Dow gained one and three quarters percent, the S&P 500 rose 2.3 percent, and the Nasdaq soared nearly 2.9 percent. Thursday's weekly jobless claims report was better than analysts had expected, boosting sentiment after monthly hiring data just days ago panicked markets and sparked a widespread sell-off. All the major S&P 500 sectors rose, led by gains in technology. Among individual movers, shares of Eli Lilly jumped 9.5% after the drug maker raised its annual profit forecast and said sales of its popular weight loss drug ZepBound topped $1 billion for the first time in a quarter. Shares of Under Armour surged more than 19 percent after the sports apparel maker posted a surprise first quarter profit, benefiting from its efforts to cut inventory and promotions. And News Corp shares, up more than 2.5 percent at the close, climbed further after hours, after the company beat estimates for fourth quarter revenue, driven in part by strength in its Dow Jones unit, which includes publications such as The Wall Street Journal and Barron's. And with that, we mark the end of the final bulletin of the Nightly Business Report for this week. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I'm Vinod Varnasurya. Thank you. Have a great weekend.